Hello everyone, I'm a Rainbow and I'm going to be talking about the setup for the Pico Neo 4 VR headset. This particular headset is visually impressive. Without a doubt, it is the best looking display I have ever had on my head. However, as an early adopter, I'm dealing with starter software and the problems that come along with that. The Quest 2 went through similar growing pains. A lot of the basic setup is self-explanatory, so I'm going to try and tackle the things that I believe are particularly important or issues that I've already encountered. I'll index the video in the description so you can jump around to anything you're interested in. Hopefully, I can answer any questions you might have if you're thinking of getting the Neo 4 yourself. Let's jump in. And here's the Pico Neo 4. It's brand new, right out of the box. So the headset, adjust in the back. Something like that. You adjust that strap there. All right, it's got four cameras. All right, and then another one right there in the middle. And then there's a fan here. And here, I don't know if this fans both sides or it's just to draw air, but uh, that's to cool it. Power switch, volume controls, right there. And USB-C port. Here's the controllers. Um, similar to the Quest 2, not quite, quite the same though. And as you can see, it's got uh, joystick, A and B button, it's got two buttons there, okay? Here we are on the home screen. Uh, this is what everything looks like. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these in particular. Library, you can see the different apps, things you can get to, file manager, they've got your videos, all of this stuff. Friends don't have any store. You guys are all familiar with the stores. Anyway, quick settings get you to this menu, screencast. We will pop in here real quick. There, give you three options. The first and the third do not work. Nothing I've been able to do it gets them to work. So if I try to cast a thing, even though I have devices that are nowhere on this network, it does not work. Now it says install the Pico app but I should be able to cast to any cast device. So I believe the software is faulty at this point. Same thing with cast to mobile, just does not see the mobile phone. However, cast to browser does work and I will demonstrate that. To cast a browser, just grab that IP address and type it into your browser. You'll get this screen here and then hit start and they should link right up and you'll be casting from your headset and I'm that's actually recording I did with OBS off my screen there's pass through mode which I hit real quick just to show you and then we're back in and to stop all you have to do is go back in and end it and that's how you cast to your browser and how you can record with OBS now we've looked at the settings, screen recording. Obviously, I'm doing that. This you can take a take a screenshot. You, they also have shortcut keys on your controller that will work for this. All right, let's go ahead and look at. Oh, let's go ahead while we're here, and uh, we'll look at this IPD adjustment. This is fairly nifty. It actually gives you a target to look at while you make adjustments, and it moves on your face. Kind of freaks you out if you're uh, not ready for it. All right, let's go ahead and go into settings. This is all the settings for everything in there. And uh, the first one I'm gonna jump into real quick is developer. And developer does not show up automatically. Uh, you have to go in there and enable it. And to enable developer, you go to general, scroll down until you get to about, then scroll down to software version, and then you got to click this seven times real quick. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you notice it disappears. That's also how you unenable developer mode. And I'm going to put that back on. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then developers right back on there. Let's go ahead and go look at lab now. Power management. I haven't messed with this. You can go to battery saver. Uh, 
recline mode. If you're going to be sitting in an easy chair somewhere, you want to turn this on because then it uh, doesn't let you move around as much. Refresh. You want to turn refresh on. And quick see-through mode. You want to turn this one on too. And uh, it works quite well, especially with the color display. However, um, it's more, it says tap. You have to kind of pound the darn thing to get it to recognize it. Let's jump into general. We'll look at all the settings there. Virtual environment. You can pick which one you want. Date and time. This is one I had to go in and set for the correct reason. It, it got me, got me the right continent, but it did not pick that up until I set it, until I set it. All right, let's look at screen casting and recording. Uh, you can pick either eye. I don't believe there's any great need to pick any one. Your field of view, this will affect the actual size of the video that you can record. And right now it's set for wide angle. And that is tied directly to resolution. These are the options you have for resolution, which you can pick with the wide angle. And if I go to standard, those are the options I get. And it automatically, the, the aspect ratio changes over automatically when you're recording. You may not even notice because I'm in the middle of recording one there. I'm going to leave it in wide angle for now. I want the bigger recording. And you could go with the square format if you want. You get more area on the screen. I take the next one down because then that's a... Uh, more of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio that I can use right away. Uh, include mic in recording. I want to do that. I have that turned on all the time. And single eye for recording and screenshot. If you turn it off and record, you will get two distinct images. Uh, probably not what you want. All right, let's look at developer real quick. USB mode, this is what you want. You want to turn this on. USB connection, charge, or transfer files. I'm going to, you want it set for file transfer if you're going to be using this. And then it has hand tracking, which I have not explored yet. So I'm going to leave that off and uh, you guys can play with it yourself. All right, those are the settings real quick. To get files off your Pico, just hook up a USB-C cable and File Explorer we should show the Pico and then you can just go to internal shared storage movies are up under screen recording and you can just copy those paste them anywhere on your computer when you're done just go ahead and delete the file off the headset now that everything else was set up and running i was ready to get some programs onto my headset and there's three good options for that which is the company store steam or side loading. And my initial plan was to start st side loading programs. Unfortunately, side loading anything does not seem to work. All the programs try to run in a portrait mode for whatever reason. So I believe the software is broken. So side loading, I could not get to work. My second option was to go ahead and use Steam, and they have a streaming assistant. Unfortunately, just like their CAS software, this does not work. This is pre-installed on the headset, and I had to download the Pico 4 software for my PC, and it does not connect. That left me with needing to buy the software off their thing, and the only software I really need was Virtual Desktop, because with Virtual Desktop's running, I should be able to run Steam. Unfortunately, that brought up another problem. To get that software, I had to be able to pay for it. To pay for it, they want you to use their virtual assistant. Virtual assistant is not available to download in the U.S. Google Play Store right now. That left me with digging up an APK that I thought was reliable. And since I do not want to put those on my phone, I said, well, let me try to install it on the device, which I did. It is running. Um, I, will, I will show you how to do that after this, um, but you need to download and install that virtual assistant. Now, you can put it on your phone if you want. I put it on the device. I entered my information, and now I'm able to pay for things. And the only thing I've actually paid for is virtual desktop. And with virtual desktop on the headset, Steam works like a champ.
and I will show you that, but I'm not going to go through the setup for virtual desktop. However, I will show you after this how I did the virtual assistant because that is the thing you need to be able to actually buy anything. All right, so to download VR Assistant, what you want to do is pull up your Pico browser. I'm already on the page, but you'll need to go to apkcombo.com. I'll link that. And the easiest way to do it is just do a search. Go ahead and type VR Assistant in there. If it comes up, it'll pull that up. Just go ahead and click on that on the page. I will also go ahead and link this there. You go ahead and click on the download, the APK, and you got to click it one more time. And when you do that, you, you always want to verify these if you can, because this is not an official repository. And once that's down, you can just go to File Manager, go to APKs, and then you're just going to open it and it will install. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to do it again, but that's all you have to do. Actually, setting up the app itself was very straightforward. There wasn't any hiccups there. You select your headset. You have to create a login. You're going to make sure your headset's set up properly. you got permissions to talk to it. And then you'll need to set up a payment method along with that. And then you just buy the software just like you would with the Quest app. And you'll be up and running. With virtual desktop on my headset, it was relatively easy to connect to my computer. I didn't have to mess with the settings much at all. They saw each other. They talked. I was able to launch Steam VR and pull up games that way. I uh, didn't have any issues, haven't had any issues with that portion of it. So that is your best bet with the Pico headset for now is to get virtual desktop on there. I hope I've answered some questions you might have had, uh, given you some things to think about if you're thinking about buying one. And by all means, if you have questions, please hit me up. I'll answer them if I can and uh, commiserate with you if I can. I'm a rainbow. Y'all be good. Take care. Bye-bye.